my marker. All right, so title your page, The Mass and Volume of Water. Okay. So, what have we learned so far? What's the connection between mass and volume? Close or same? Close. Ooh, how close are they? It's like decimal points off. Like decimal points off. How many decimal points off? Like, how close really are we talking about here? Is it thousands of a decimal? Thousands of a decimal? Man, that's really close. Now, here's another question. The people who had the little syringes, you think they got them closer to being the same than the people who had the big syringes? Is that is that probably true? Because yeah. it's easier to get exactly like right on the number, right? And so I'm going to actually say that they're the same, all right? Because if we have precise equipment, right, like if we have a better ability to measure exactly and to visualize exactly where that line is and to get right on the line, we're going to be able to get a lot closer. And as it turns out, like I said, the definition of a gram is actually the mass of one cubic centimeter, or which is the same as a milliliter, of water. So they really truthfully are exactly the same. I'm missing the same number. Okay? Of course, mass, just to write this down in your book so you make sure you have it somewhere, mass is grams and volume. What unit of measure do we use for volume? Milliliters, which is okay. Another name for this same exact thing, which I'm going to give you because you might see it in different places, but it's exactly the same thing. It's also called CC, which stands for cubic centimeters. I'm going to run on a road here. Does that make sense? But they are the same thing. The um, milliliters actually is, is defined based on the size of a cubic center. Same thing, same, 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 but just different abbreviation, different meaning, same thing. There's not different meaning, different word. Okay? So the mass and the volume of water are the same number. And so what we can say about that is that, I should make this bigger, okay? Is that since they're the same number, we can use them to predict each other. Right? Anybody want to take a wild guess? What is the mass of 2,000 milliliters of water? 2,000 grams. What is the volume of 160 grams of water? Isn't it beautiful how easy that is? They're always going to be exactly the same. So you can use them to predict each other. And then just to kind of throw a little bit of terminology at you, you've probably heard this phrase before, but this would be a great place where you could apply this phrase. They are directly proportional. Have you heard that phrase before? And that just means that as one gets bigger, the other gets bigger. And they get bigger at the same rate. Sound good? All right. Next thing that I want to, I'm going to scoot this up here a little bit. Water is made of what? It is made of hydrogen and oxygen. What are hydrogen and oxygen? Elements, right? All right. So funny story from last night at the open house. A parent asked me, 
where's your periodic table? Like looking around, like, why don't you have one on the walls? And I had never, it had never even occurred to me that I don't have a periodic table on the walls in here, but yet I teach chemistry. And the reason is because I don't even like having a periodic table at the beginning of the school year because it makes us all think about things that are like kind of complicated, like how many elements are there and like what are all their names? And the true story, we will get into that later, by the way, but the true story is at the basic level, what is everything made of? It's all made of elements, but what's an element made of? Atoms. It's atoms, right? And I like to use the word particles because this word kind of gets us unconfused for between talking about, you know, the atoms versus the molecules and the what up. Because ultimately, basically, they kind of all act the same for a lot of the introductory level chemistry stuff that we do in this class. So I like the word particles for the beginning of the year and we'll eventually get past that, but not for now. So water is made of particles. How can we draw them? Dots, dots work great. There's some dots that can equal water, right? If you prefer to use circles a little bit, that is great. Did anybody have a hard time seeing things that were drawn on a board that was kind of across the room from you a little bit? Anybody have that trouble? Okay. Sometimes when we draw big whiteboards like this, it's, it's better to draw like slightly larger circles just because it's easier to see from across the room, but it's not important. Okay. But these are all great ways to draw things. Sound good? Um, what about the size of boxes? What is a box equal? Could, well, I mean, it's just a box for now. We could put water in it, but what is it? What is it? What is it? What is this box versus this box? This box has more. It doesn't have anything inside it yet, so there's no mass in there yet. I think I heard it. Yeah, less space, which is volume. I think I heard both of those things. This one has more space. Right? All right, now the next question here. If I make three dots versus if I make, I don't know, I'm just going to make a bunch here. That's 10. If I have three dots versus 10 dots, what does that mean? It means more mass, right? And the unit of measure that we use to measure mass is? Sound good? Questions? Is that pretty easy? All right, there's your first chemistry note.